It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in Silicon Valley at the Santa Clara Convention Center at the Anita Borg Women of Vision Awards uh, c Ceremony. Later tonight, they're going to give out some great Women of Vision Awards. So we want to come down, meet some of the finalists, actually the winners, uh, and also talk to some of the folks from Anita Borg. So I'm really excited to have with me um, Lucille Mayer, CIO Client Experience Delivery at BNY Mellon. Welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Happy to be here. Absolutely, and uh, you won the award. BNY Mellon won the award for the vision, so congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes, it's very wonderful to be recognized as the top company for women in technology this year. We're in great company, and really see this as an honor to be recognized in this way in the technology community. Yeah, that's great. So talk a little bit about some of the factors that went into the determination of the award. Well, as you know, you know, Niederborg uses a very metrics-based methodology to determine the firms that are recognized this way. Certainly, I'm proud to announce that 30% of our technology associates, and that's across 13,000 people worldwide, are women. 30%? So 30% worldwide. worldwide. Wow. And so that's a tremendous, you know, go, uh, aspiration and we how we've gotten there is a number of different programs um, certainly uh, we've leveraged a lot of the best practices that Anita Borg has teaching us taught us so that we have lean in circles um, we have a sponsorship program of which each one of our technology executive committee members personally sponsor a high potential woman across the organization um, to ha help develop their careers. Uh, we also have an increased focus certainly on diversity recruitment. Uh, this year our uh, campus recruitment uh, leadership executive training class has 64% women in it as well. Wow. And then the other piece, uh, we've actually developed a um, job competency framework for okay. all of the roles that we have in, in our technology organization, which clearly articulates the roles, the um, expectations of those roles, and the promotion cr uh, criteria for those roles. That actually has done a lot to increase our job satisfaction across women and men, to really ex you know, articulate the expectations. It also creates a level playing field for promotions and advancements. So people honestly know what does it take to get ahead. And that's helped us in conjunction with a rigorous promotion process to actually lever leverage those criteria, measurements of success, and give everyone a level playing field to get ahead. So it's interesting. So le leveraging some of the Anita Borg best practices that were really originally developed for women, you've expanded that into diversity, and you're also getting returns within the men uh, that work there as well. That's correct. And I think to the point, we know, and, and certainly all the firms that are very involved in Anita Borg know that you know, diversity is breeding more innovation, delivering more innovation delivers greater technology solutions for our clients, which are the center of everything we do at BMY Mellon. Right, right. And you said you've been in finance your whole career and, and at some some company that eventually ended up getting purchased where you are to now. Right. now. Talk about how, the, how it's changed over the last um, number of years in terms of kind of inclusion and acceptance of women in the technology role in financial services. Well, like I said, I think that, um, you know, being in an organization that's 13,000 strong, again, many of the, the associates that work in BMY Mellon have come through acquisitions from different cultures. There's certainly a harmonization of the culture and very much uh, a change that's going on in the organization is about evidence-based management. So truly being able to be a, whatever you do, you're a service provider of what you do. And how do you uh, identify the metrics of success in your service that you provide? And then you are evaluated versus that. Again, that's a way to give everyone a level playing field that everyone can be successful because they truly understand what it takes for them to be successful in the job that they're doing. Right, right. That is a cultural shift that's really going on in BMY Mellon of us all as service providers serving, servicing others either internally or externally at our clients and really knowing what we have to do to help everyone be successful. Yeah, it's an interesting perspective. You often hear about internal departments being service providers to other departments in the company, but I don't think I've often heard really taking it down to the individual role, being a service provider to the rest of the organization. That's uh, pretty granular. Right. Just think about how powerful that would be, Jeff, right? If we can get everybody to understand what is the value that they play in our organization, so it's not something that's just at the high, highest level. And if everyone takes that service level ownership and says, what do I have, do I know every day what my clients expect of me and how well am I doing to perform those goals? 
it makes us an incredibly powerful organization. It's taking the strength of that 13,000 and having them go towards one goal. Right. So let's shift gears a little bit about and talk about tech. And I love um, that, that most companies today are tech companies, whether they know it or not. They just happen to have other services wrapped around that technology, whether it's Uber or financial institution. You guys have always been on the cutting edge of tech. But I think what's interesting about your, your title, I've never seen this client experience delivery, but it's come up in a number of places where we've been. We're in banking and financial institutions. Most of the interactions are no longer at the branch. It's some electronic form. So talk about how that has changed in the banking industry and what, why you've got a really senior position to execute on that. Okay. Well, I think it's important, I think, yes, to the point, the success of technology development and product development is all about changing the lens around to look in the needs of the client. Right? You're delivering to what they need, not necessarily what you have to sell. And the bottom line is, uh, think about it, BMY Mellon actually services 76% of the Fortune 500 companies, so we're more of a B2B type model. Okay. So us truly understanding what market segments, what types of companies we're servicing, what do they need from us, and making sure that we're delivering this in an, a very cohesive and easy to use way, however they want to consume it, whether it's the more traditional browser type methods, mobile type methods, or electronic type methods. We have to make sure that we're meeting all those kinds of of needs and that each client almost gets almost it's almost like a bespoke experience but we're delivering in a mass customizable way certainly we have a tremendous um, uh, investment in innovation we actually last year built out four different technology innovation centers one here right in Palo Alto oh, okay. and we'll be building a fifth one at the end of this month uh, at the end of this year I'm sorry in London as well and this is where we're actually reaching out and trying to say what is the latest things that are going on in technology, whether it's open source, whether it's the fintech, right, all these different startups that are bringing different services to bear. How do we embrace all that and take those technology advances and bring that to the benefit of our clients and scale for them? Right, that's interesting. We. Uh, we covered the opening of the Ford Innovation Center that they opened in Palo Alto, ironically, just down the street from Tesla. Mm -hmm. and, and we see a lot of that in automotive, and Samsung has an innovation center here in downtown Palo Alto. So that's interesting that you guys are doing that too. So we're almost out of time, but I want to give you the last word, and I think this is always a great question. You know, What advice would you give to yourself um, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or to young women or families who want to get into tech and maybe think, eh, I don't know if it's a great career for women? What would you tell them? I think to the point, I think there's so many different opportunities and I don't think about, I mean, certainly engineering is very valued, but there are many different diverse types of roles in technology today. I always love the idea of user experience experts, right? That's combining technology and psychology to make sure that you're de delivering the most positive experience to the client. So there's lots of different things you can do. The second piece is, my advice to myself in the past is your career is going to go not in ways that you ever anticipated. And you need to take risks and many chances and maybe do things that you hadn't anticipated. But I, I like to say getting ahead in your career is a series of different moves. Some of them are hierarchical, some of them are lateral. Having the wider view makes you a much more valuable associate to others in your organization, makes you much more valuable as a leader. So take all of those things that you didn't expect and just jump into them. And go for it. I think, you know, in the end, I look back, there's so many things I did that, I, that were different. Even what I'm doing right now is different, but I love it. And I still love, you know, helping other people get ahead in their careers. Love it. Jump in and just go for it. Yeah. Well, congratulations once again, uh, Lucille Mayer, the winner of the top company here at the Anita Borg Women of Vision Awards. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to BNY Mellon. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. And we're very honored to accept tonight. I can't wait. Awesome. Jeff Rick here on the ground. Uh, at the Anita Borg Women of Vision Awards in Santa Clara, California. Thanks for watching.